Namaste everyone. Uh, today we are going to meet uh, Dr. Amit Kumar Pandey. He is a neurophysician. Can you tell us a bit about your background and how you became a neurologist? Yeah. Uh, I became a neurologist after doing my basic degrees. You, you, ne you need to pass 12 standard, get into the entrance exams. During our time, there was the common entrance test for medicals. We did the MSCET, got into the MBBS. Always wanted to become a doctor and did that uh, in a free seat, luckily to get a free seat. After that, did my uh, MD medicine in the government college of Vaishampayan Medical College. And later, uh, did my DM neurology at the Bombay Hospital Institute of Medical Sciences. So it has been a long journey in which I have traversed to different parts of Maharashtra, say from uh, Ahmednagar to Solapur to Mumbai, and have also been to a few places uh, like uh, Trivandrum, and uh, Sri Chitra Institute of Medical Sciences for my uh, EEG observership. So it was a wonderful journey and I have enjoyed every bit of it. How can we as a student develop healthy habits to support brain functions? Yeah, that is a very good question. Healthy habits develop at home. You have to be regular, punctual in your day-to-day -day activities. We often think that we will do it later, we'll get up late, we will do it slowly. Having wonderful habits, regular habits at home is a prime necessity to develop good mental health. For example, if you have a good night's sleep, it is imperative because your brain also needs resting. You all know a simple analogy in which you use computers. Until unless you press the control and S button or save something, the con computer doesn't store anything. So similarly for the brain, the sleep is similar to saving a lot of data in your mind. And when you save a lot of data, you, your brain becomes healthy by sleeping. Then uh, eating regularly at regular times. It is very, very important. In today's world, children are mostly you know, taken away by this fast food stuff. They have something, have quick snacks. And uh, this, this doesn't help your digestive system as well. Digestive system and your brain, the relation is very, very important and it has been proven now that there is something which is known as gut relationship with the brain. Uh, so any bad eating habits or any uh, poor gut habits may lead to brain uh, degeneration that has been proven in literature and also cause ill health. Thirdly, we most importantly forget this important dictum, like you drink enough amount of water Children in their playtime, as well as during their studies, don't take in consideration this, this fact that they need to drink a lot of water. Uh, 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 teenage children like you all should at least uh, drink about 2.5 liters of water daily, come what may. Whatever the season, it, let it be cold, let it be humid, let it be hot, you have to drink a lot of water. Fourthly, nowadays, this since COVID, most of the children have their educations on the mobile. And this mobile addiction has led to a lot of syndromes, which we know, know as brain fog syndrome or reversing of the neuronal growth. And we have encountered a lot of patients in our clinic, pediatric patients who have lost their scholastic skills. For example, they were able to do something better previously, and now they have just gone, gone down in those skills. Somebody playing wonderful chess is not now able to do the same, or doing wonderful maths is not able to do the same. So everything in proportion, everything at regular times is very, very important to have a good brain health. Lastly, all children of your age should play. We as children grew up playing a lot, not indoors but outdoors. You have to keep your physical strength, which, which secretes a lot of positive hormones like the endorphins, which stimulate your brain growth. Sleep also helps increase your height because it is during the sleep that the growth hormone is secreted maximum. So your height increases when you play a lot, you eat regularly and you sleep well. So these are the important things that you should follow when you're talking about um, uh, you know, developing your brain health. How do you see the role of generative AI in neurology evolving in the next three to five years? Yeah, with AI coming up big way, we all should know how to use AI. And AI has now proven to be equally good as clinicians or neurologists in solving medical problems. So for example, there was a recent article in a paper that AI has helped to diagnose uh, conditions with 89% accuracy, similar to what 
neurologist after a prolonged duration of time or some clinical test would be able to diagnose. So in the near, near future, AI will definitely help in three main areas. A, it will help us to diagnose symptoms properly. B, it will help us to uh, you know, carry out tests properly. And three, it will also put us into a paradigm or an algorithm in which the patient should be treated in a future way. So these three parameters with together with uh, using this data in research is going to help uh, transform medical health, neurological health in all spheres, be it uh, uh, therapeutics, research, um, investigations and diagnosis. So AI is going to be very, very helpful in the near future. You all should be, you know, wanting to learn AI as quickly as possible. Can you reward in your most best experience in a neurologist? Uh, my most rewarding experience as a neurologist has always been when my patients have got better. Uh, one case typically comes to my mind when I was working in uh, Solapur. We had a young boy about 12, 12 years old. Uh, uh, he had come in completely unconscious state and uh, he had no signs of respiration and we had to put him on a mechanical ventilator. And uh, we then found out that uh, he had been bit by a snake. and. Uh, for about one, one and a half month, he was on the ventilator with no signs of any movement, no movement of his limbs, the eyes not reacting. And after 45 days of being on ventilator, he finally opened his eyes. And uh, we, were, we were very proud that by day 60th, he was able to walk home on his own feet. And that has been one of the most rewarding experiences in the field of neurology, in which a condition has been completely re reversed but the perseverance of treatment has helped the patient to survive this. The other uh, such a thing happened recently in COVID when a young boy, 15-year-old, uh, had developed a condition which we all know now as GBS, Guillain-Barre syndrome. And he, he was on ventilator for about two years and he is now at home. He's still bedridden, but he is able to talk, uh, move all his limbs. And uh, we are happy, very, very happy to have helped him come out of all the dreadful situations he has been. So uh, these two conditions, particularly of younger children, have uh, come to my mind. And I am uh, very, very, I feel myself very blessed that I am able to help uh, patients to get better. And uh, nothing, you know, helps you or makes you feel better when your patients do well. So that's it. So my question is, what is the difference between uh, a neurologist and a neurosurgeon? Yeah, it is similar to the thing. See, uh, when you do MBBS, it is the degree itself says that Bachelor of Medicine and Bachelor of Surgery. So when you're talking about a neurologist, he's a neurophysician. That is a, a doctor who treats conditions with the help of medicines. So neurologist, I being a neurologist, am able to treat uh, patients, diagnose patients and guide them to what needs to be done. So it is like I give them medicines for a seizure. A patient, if he's having an epilepsy, I give him medicines and treat him. Uh, on the other side, a neurosurgeon, as the term itself indicates, he operates the patient. He decides what needs to be operated upon. And um, if there is a patient with epilepsy who has got seizures, I give him medicines to stop those seizures. But if there is a focus or if there is a lesion or if there is a tumor in the brain, a neurosurgeon will grow, go in and operate that tumor and remove that tumor. So neurosurgeons especially uh, help in removing any abnormal structural growths that may be in the brain or the spine. And neurologists help you treat uh, diseases with the help of medicines and guide help with the neurosurgeons. They help guide the treatment management plan for the for the patient. So neurosurgeons operate, neurologists treat with medicines. This is essentially a difference between them. Although the training also for the first year it is basic the same, but the operative surgeons they get m most mostly trained in the operative theatres and the neurologists are trained in the wards because they see patients clinically and diagnose patients clinically. Uh, namaste sir, uh, my question is uh, w uh, which is the best field in uh, doctors? There is nothing like best field. See, as, as a neurologist, I always feel my field is the best. Everybody feels so. A person who is playing uh, cricket, if he's a batsman, he'll feel that nothing else like batting. So even in, in the field of medicine, whichever field helps you treat the patient is the most satisfying and you feel very good for the job. 
In case of neurology or medicine, it is more like maths. If this is one symptom, this is the other symptom, this is the investigation. So 1 plus 1 plus 1 is equal to 3. So when you have got these analytical problems, you tend to be satisfied a little more because you have used your brain to analyze a problem and treat the problem. In other cases, I don't say that uh, surgery is not uh, challenging or surgery is not very satisfying. Surgery demands the utmost level of skills that a person can have in this universe. You need to soak up all the pressure when you're operating a person who is alive, whose heart is beating, and you need to go inside, say for a neurosurgeon, go inside the brain, remove the tumor and not cause any damage to the surrounding structures. This is very, very difficult and it is a high skill job. So skills and intellect both if together it helps you much in any any field of neurology all fields of uh, all fields of medicine all fields of uh, say medical science are equally satisfying if you are true to your goal if you are happy with what you want to achieve and if you are satisfied with what you have achieved so i think there is no single delineation that this is a, a wonderful field for a doctor this is not because even, uh, even doctors who only see these films, like the radiologist, or who see only the blood, like the pathologist, they play a pivotal role for diagnosing and treating patients as much as the clinicians like us do. So any field in which you are happy with whatever you are working is equally important in the field of medicine. And I don't think you can just put one above the other because without one you would not have gone to the other. Yes. So I think that is why uh, the study comes like this. In MBBS you are taught about 14 subjects or uh, basics of everything and you learn all the basics and then you go on to, you know, go on to do a subset of it. So MBBS, then you do only medicine. From medicine, you do only neurology. From neurology, now again, there is decoction of, say, a movement disorder or epilepsy or a stroke, something of that sort. Namaste, sir. My question is that how do you stay up to date with growing technologies in medical field? How do you? Stay up to date. Uh, yeah. Uh, see, we, we as uh, medical professionals are privileged in knowing what is coming up next. So, A, I am always involved in a lot of medical trials in which newer drugs are coming or newer therapeutic modalities are coming for treating some patients. Secondly, we always keep on reading. So, I, uh, I typically go on a jog or a walk every morning at 5.30 to 6.30 in which I use the audibles to read about an article, to know about an article, to read about something which is uh, related to a patient or not related to a patient but it is helpful information or upgrading, going to upgrade my knowledge. The other thing is we also have these continued medical education programs which we know as CMEs in which we attend conferences where knowledge is shared between two neurologists, two cities, two countries and between continents. So we have got people from different countries coming to our place and sharing their knowledge about what technology and what new diagnosis and what modalities they are coming up, what research has come up. And we also in, in turn give our clinical expertise in what needs to be taken with a pinch of salt and what needs to be accepted as a new norm and go ahead. So any medical field is always a, you know, it's a continued learning process. Every day, every patient teaches you a new thing and we are still learning and we will continue to learn till we, we you know, uh, stop, shut shop in our clinical practice. So every patient is different, every patient's demands are different, every patient's anatomy is different, every patient's medical knowledge or medical science is different. So you learn from the patient, you learn from the books, you learn from attending conferences and you learn from your wisdom. So you have to be updated and you have to always be grounded. You cannot always say that you know everything in medical field. There are many things you do. You know only the tip of the iceberg. You don't know everything. Thank you, sir, for uh, coming in our school uh, and uh, for your dedication. Thank you. Yeah, I, I'm very happy. Uh, it's a privilege to come to your school. And I was very, very happy to see you interested in the field of neurology and asking these uh, questions to me, which made me think a lot about how to answer and how to uh, put forth things across you. Now, one very important point I need to reiterate and tell you that nothing in life comes for free. It has to be achieved with dedication, determination and devotion. And you young minds need to work towards a goal to achieve something. It need not be in the field of medicine or commerce. It can be in the field of sports or uh, arts. 
सो यू हैव टू बी ट्रूथ ट्रूथफुल टू वट एवर योर पैशन इज थिंक फ्रॉम योर हार्ट एनालाइज फ्रॉम योर ब्रेन एंड कंटिन्यू टू सक्सीड इन एवरी वॉक ऑफ योर लाइफ बेस्ट विशेज टू ऑल ऑफ यू थैंक यू सो मच